Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, let's start where we left off yesterday. So most of the string method we have already discussed. Okay, and uh, ninety nine percent of the time we will be discuss uh, needing in data science specially only these method, but few are left. So let me cover those as well. Very very basic those are. So let me start with something. Suppose uh, I take up a string, something like a multi line string. Okay, one. So to write a multi line string, I need triple quotes. So I write something suppose hi, how, then I press enter to move to the next line. Then I mention R, then I mention U. Okay, again I press enter uh, to change the line. Then I say I am doing good. Okay, so basically I have multi-line string right now. And if I want to see this, I can print it. I'm getting a multi-line string now. Suppose what I want, I want first line. Separate second line, separate third line, separate means I want to split the lines somehow. Okay, the way we split it the words yesterday. This time I want to split the lines. So again, we do have a function available for the same known as split line function. Split. Press tab automatically will be completed. Just uh, if I press enter, can you see everyone? What is that done? Your lines have been splitted into. Multiple line, right? See, first line is this means everything it has been splitted, and then um, after the splitting, they have been stored inside a list. The square bracket indicates the list that we have discussed yesterday. Okay, so this is your uh, first line, this is your second line, and this is your uh, third line. And as I told you, in sometimes in natural language processing, you need to uh, deal with the individual words, or sometimes you need to individually split your, or individually get your sentences as well. For that purpose, actually, we use. Split lines, okay. Just to split the lines. If you want to split the line, you can use a split line function. Very, very simple. Nothing special. Similarly, if we go here, uh, suppose I have I created some string. Suppose this. Uh, I mention uh, something like uh, true. Okay. There is a string known as true. Example. Okay. There is a string, or suppose I made s is equal to true. Okay. It's the string. Fine. And I want to ensure that although I told you really you will be using, I want to check whether this uh, a string. Is actually an identifier or is a reserve word? Okay. Suppose I want to know is it a reserve word? So again, I have a function known as s. This is a string name is s dot is identifier. Okay. If I just check it, it will tell me true because true is what a identifier. Remember, true is what an identifier. If I type true this way or a reserve word, it is showing me what green means that it's a reserve word. It's a keyword which is available. So if you are giving uh, treating any string and you want to check, okay, whether it is a uh, identifier or is a reserve word available or not? So you can use the function known as is identifier. I told you these are uh, very rarely you are going to use, but at least you should have an idea. Okay, there is a function something like that. Similarly, uh, there is one more function known as make transition. If I show you, suppose s dot uh, make trans, okay, something like this. If I go inside, what it does? See, it returns a translation table usable for a string dot translate. Understand everyone what it is saying? Okay, returns a translation table usable for string dot translate means it does something which will be used for some other table. Oh, sorry, for some other function means it will do something which will be used for some other function to work on. Means you want to translate something. What do you mean by translate? Let me take an example. Suppose uh, what I did, I have a word. Okay, a string available. Suppose I make a uh, hello world. Hello world. I just have a string, and what I want to do, uh, I want to replace wherever there is H is with the P. So we had an option of S dot replace. That is another available because suppose I want to do uh, some further translation. Suppose multiple words I want to translate at the same time. At one go, I want to translate multiple words at the same time. Okay, something like that. So what I can do, see, understand everyone. I'm going to say suppose I want to create a translation table. So I give a name trans, and use what. Although I can use the S dot make trans as well, but no point of using that. So I am just typing the keyword string. Okay. Dot make trans. Okay. I use this. Although I will write S here, it will also work. No impact is going to show you. Means even I can type here only S. Means there is a string S and you want to type here S, it will work. Perfect. Because its only purpose is to make the string trans, uh, what? A translation table. And here, what I am passing, see everyone, I'm passing right now just one argument. And that argument is actually I'm passing inside the parentheses. Okay. Inside the parentheses, and here I will uh, type my translation. What translation I want? Okay. What translation I want? I want to pass this here. 
what translation actually I want to do here. So I'm going to pass here something like that. Suppose wherever there is H, something like this. Okay, wherever there is H, okay, I will translate it with suppose uh, say P. Okay, wherever there is H, I will translate it with P. Okay, so this is the translation which it has created. Means wherever there will be H, it will be translated to P. So now what I can do? Let me execute this. Okay, now I can call another function C. S dot on this string, right? S dot translate function. Okay, and here I can pass my translation table. If I go inside, see what it needs. It needs a table. Okay, what table? Translation table. And who has created the translation table? This trans table. Okay, this trans table. So I can pass here trans. Okay, and what will happen wherever in this S, wherever there is H, that will be replaced by P. So you will get hello world if I execute this. Can you see everyone? First thing. Yes, I mean, right now, passing only one argument, right? So what it has done, it has just created a translation table for me. It has just created a translation table for me. For example, I move ahead. And I again mention something like this. Suppose wherever there is L, okay, uh, I will replace it by suppose, uh, let's say mm, O, okay. Wherever there is L, I will replace by O. Let me execute this, done. Let me translate it. Check everyone, what has happened? Can you observe? Wherever there will be H, it will be replaced by what? P. Wherever there is L, it will be replaced by what? Okay, so wherever there was H, that was replaced by P. So we can see P. Wherever there was L, it has been replaced by O. So we are getting P E O O. Similarly, here we have L, that has been replaced by again O. So if you want further changes, you can further mention this. Okay, you can further mention this. For example, suppose wherever there is D, okay, colon. I want to replace it by, I want to make a translation table, I mean translate it to suppose a Q. Wherever this D, I want to translate with the Q. So execute this. Okay, again, use this. I think it should be clear, everyone. Yes. Okay, so what this make trans will do? This make trans will just make a translation table, and that translation table uh, you will pass to the S trans means translate function. Okay, so anything you can use here, it here barely use means that's that it should be string. So I can type here even S, it will work. If I even use S, it will work. Let me show you that. The same as if you use, suppose I give a name trans one, okay, and uh, copy this. And here I mention s dot, sorry, s dot make translation. Let me execute this, done. And again, if I want to use this, let me copy this. And the translate function, I, if I pass this one, the translated table, okay, and execute this. See exactly same result. Okay, just think that whenever you want to make use of it, make translation function, you need a string actually. Okay, so without even creating a string, you can use a string uh, keyword and dot. Then you can use the word. I think it is okay, everyone. Yes. Okay. Other way. See yes, other sir. other way. Other way. How we can do the same thing? Suppose I have a string this time. Suppose I'm giving the name text. Okay, and the string is suppose. Good night. Mm, Sam. Okay. Good night, Sam. This is my string. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, please. Uh, sir, I'm getting confused between that word translate because mm -hmm. in our dictionary, translate means translate from one language to other. Uh, I agree, agree, agree. It is just, it, it, it will just replace whatever character you will mention here uh, by that character. Okay. 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 Yeah. It will just replace by the character that you will replace by this. Okay, okay, so for okay. example, I've just mentioned uh, H will be replaced by P, P, L will be replaced by O, and D will be replaced by Q. Okay. Okay, okay. this is only trans. Yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> okay, and let me show you one more thing. Suppose I mention here uh, P. Okay, intentionally let me mention P. And you can understand itself. What I have to mention, L should be replaced by what? O oh, means vice versa will not happen. Whatever H is this, H will replace by P. L will be replaced by O. See, we have an O here. Okay. And we are made here. L will be replaced by O, but not the vice versa. Remember, not the vice versa. L will be replaced by O. So O is still there. Can you observe? Just that your L has been replaced by O. 
actually, and whatever we are seeing inside this, this is another data structure in uh, Python that we call it as a dictionary. This is known as key, and this is known as value. This is actually key value pairs. We'll see that, but uh, I didn't intentionally introduce right now so that you don't get confused. This is another data structure that we will see here, known as dictionary. Okay, I think it's fine, sir, now, okay? Is it fine, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, now suppose this is the one thing. Now, almost same achievement that we did here, we can achieve this way as well. Suppose I did, uh, I mentioned x is equal to, and here I mention suppose, um, suppose, suppose, suppose I mention M, and then I mention capital S, and then I mention A, okay? Just give me a minute, you will understand everything, okay? Then I make Y, and here I mention, okay, uh, M should be replaced by E, S should be replaced by suppose J, and A should be replaced by suppose O. Okay, so what I did understand, this is a text given to me and decided, okay, wherever there will be M, I will be replacing by E. Where there will, will be S, I will be replacing by J. Wherever there will be O, that will be replaced by O. Right, I mentioned something like this. Clear everyone what I've just mentioned? Okay, M will be replaced by E. S will be replaced by J, A will be replaced by O. Now what I can do, see, again, I can again use my trans make translation function. So I say my trans table, okay, equals to, again, I can use str or I can use the directly data text, does not matter, dot make translate. And right now, earlier I pass only one argument, okay? And if you want to pass only one argument, you have to pass as a dictionary. Okay, you have to pass a dictionary. This is only one argument, right? Everything packed inside this curly brace. It's only one argument. If you don't want to use this way, if you want to pass two arguments, okay? It can support up to three arguments. So if one argument has to be only passed, it has to be passed like a dictionary. If you want to pass two arguments, then in first argument, you should have all the characters, okay? Which you want to translate and all the characters to which they want to translate. It's M with E, S with J, A with O. And you can pass this way, X comma Y. You can pass it this way, x comma y. And once after doing that, you can again use the way, uh, the way we use. Remember what we did? We said s dot or text dot this time. Text dot, again, translate function, okay? And here I can pass my translation table. What is that? Trans table, okay? And let me execute this. And if you can see, please compare everyone. Uh, where is M? M is here. So M has been replaced by E. Can you observe? Yes. Right. Uh, where is S? S is here. So S has been replaced by J. Okay. Right. Where is A? A is at the middle. So A has been replaced by O. So that is J. I think it's explanatory, everyone. Any any way you would like to use, it's your choice. Any way you want to use, it's your choice. Okay, similarly, there is one more third argument it can take. Okay, let me copy the same thing again. Third more argument it can take. Okay, what is that? Let me come to that. And suppose that is third argument is, I mentioned one more argument, Z this time. Okay, and uh, I mentioned here something, suppose uh, O, D, N, G, H, D. O, D, N, G, H, D means what? Understand everyone. Uh, these are the characters that I want to remove from my original string. Okay, the characters which you want to remove from my original string that are O, D, N, G, H, T. O, D, N, G, H, T. These I want to remove means uh, these O will be removed. Okay, these two O will be removed. And then uh, D, where is D? This D will be removed. So only thing remaining will be what? G, G, right? Now move ahead N. So N will be removed. I will remain because we have not mentioned I. Now G H T, this will be removed. So only thing that you will get will be G I and Sam. Then apply this transformation. Okay, G I Sam. So what I get G I and Joe. If I execute this, uh huh. What happened? Oh, I didn't mention Z here, right? Yeah. 
third argument, right? I didn't mention my third argument, that is Z. So once I mentioned my third argument, first argument is X, second argument is Y, third argument is Z. That means the character that you want to remove, X the character you're going to translate, Y the characters to which you want to translate, and Z the characters you want to remove. So if I execute this, is it okay, everyone? Okay. Simple, remember, I told you very rarely you may be using it. Yes, but a uh, little bit idea should be there. What is the purpose of the same? Similarly, we have one more function here known as encode function. Okay, we have one more function known as encode. Suppose my string is Python. Okay. Sorry, your screen is not visible, sir. Everyone, is my screen visible or not? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. visible. Uh, please check your internet connection. I think if others are able to see, I think there's an issue at, any, at your end. Can you please check that? You can reconnect. Okay, sir. Okay, because others are able to see. Yeah. So let me move ahead. Again, very rarely, I never used in the uh, last five years, honestly speaking, but you should know, okay, sometime in interview, they ask you, okay, what is the purpose of this function or something? Although very rarely you will be in... In one in 1000 people will ask you such kind of question. They normally give you the task. They don't ask you what function is used for this. They give you the task. Okay, implement this task. Well, how you can do that? Just show me that. Okay. So that function is actually your encode function. So suppose what? S dot encode. Okay. And inside that, I can mention my, suppose directly S is Python, my encoding. Okay. My encoding. And by default, the encoding is UTF-8. Okay, UTF-8 means Unicode text format that is available, 8-bit representation. Encoding is UTF-8, but I can mention different encoding as well if I want to. For example, by default is UTF-8, okay? If I mention, uh, example, UTF-8, let me mention this only, okay? This is simple, so not much difference you can see, okay? But if I make it 16, this is the actually representation of this string. Okay, in Unicode, but 16 bit. Similarly, UT of 32. So of course, my number of correct, uh, bits will be improved, will be increased rather, see? Right, so I think you are getting an idea what this purpose is. Okay, just to encode, just to encode, you rarely will be using it. I never use it. I don't think so you will be ever using it. But as we should know in somehow, some way it is required and don't worry about any function. It may be possible you don't get any function to use. Then what do or you do? I just mentioned you type that function means use your uh, create your object. After the create the object, press a dot, put a parenthesis and read the definition. Experiment with it. Okay, experiment with it. Okay, when this function will be required? What is the use case? And Google is there to help you out. Okay, Google is there to help you out because you will not be able to remember all the functions for lifetime because more than 500 functions, 600 functions, we will be discussed. So it's almost impossible. I think 30 plus, so we have already done. Okay, so it's almost impossible to use them. Okay, so let me move ahead again. Uh, last function, let me take it up. Uh, suppose I have uh, again a dictionary, which is given like this, X is equal to key value, it means curly braces. And it is giving something like that, X, colon, uh, I mentioned here, suppose John, okay? This is key, X is key and John is pair, okay? Sorry, uh, X is key and John is value, key and value, okay? Second key is suppose Y, okay? And its corresponding value is suppose Vic. I'm just randomly taking some name, okay? And uh, I write some fun I write some string, suppose I'm writing a string print, Okay, and actually what my objective is, understand everyone, my objective is to type actually this. John's example, see, John's last name is Vic. I just want to write this. Okay, I want to write this. John's last name is Vic. Okay, so one way we have already seen, how we can you do that? Suppose these two are stored in a variable, means what is stored, uh, X, is a variable whose value is stored, uh, whose value is suppose John, something given like this, okay? And uh, Y is his surname, which is given this like, uh, like, then it's very easy, right? How can I do that? I can do, I want to use this X and Y. Then what I can do here, I can specify what? My curly braces, A. right everyone? Can you remember, right? Here my curly braces, then last name is again, I can put what? 
other curly but again curly braces then i can mention what dot format and then i can mention what everyone can you remember 01 remember what i can mention here 01 not 01 not 01 anyone any idea what can i do here if i type x here y here what i will get see why we use this remember this is what is string formatting remember when we want to insert some variables or some formatted string to a existing string then we use this format method that we have already done right if that is the case x is equal to john or this is vic we can use that okay we discussed that i think can you recall this everyone we discussed yes. thing yes. right now similarly but that is the case then fine but suppose your data is given to you like this data is given to you like this instead of this if it is given like this it is very easy to do right but suppose data is given to like this again same method we will use but again a little bit difference so again i'm copying same instruction okay and here i'm mentioning what understand i'm mention here x means your key what is the key x i need john here so what is the john's key john's key is x so i mention here x okay uh what is the uh vix key vix key is y so i mention here y okay and here i mention what instead of format function i will use a function known as format underscore map okay format underscore map and which map the map that is available here and that is the name of the map name of the map or dictionary is what okay so what i will do same function is a little bit modification format map whenever format map will be there you will pass a map here map is nothing but a dictionary or a mapping type means x will be mapped to the john y will be mapped to the map okay and just pass their keys because actually dictionaries are if you want to access any element of this dictionary we pass their keys means s like this a is your dictionary in square bracket i have to pass its key suppose x if i pass this its key i will get its value what is the value here like this okay so any element of this mapping type or a dictionary we want to access so in uh, after creating the dictionary or mapping type in a square bracket pass its key what is the key so key is what x so when i pass x i will get that value okay same thing is just showing here okay same thing if i want to access this wick now you can tell me i want to access this wick so how can i access everyone what should i mention here in brackets why if i why why because it's its key okay so what we have mentioned here the keys the corresponding keys we have mentioned here and we say okay these keys okay where we are to okay, which map we are using we are using the map a. a map so that thing has been mentioned here i think it is okay now everyone can i move ahead? let me execute this and i can verify as well. hope it is fine yes sir yes sir okay. yes, okay. so let me move ahead now okay to the next thing come on yeah let me come to arithmetic operators okay let me come to the arithmetic operators there are several arithmetic operators which are available in python like addition you can use subtraction you can use multiplication you can use division you can use exponentiation you can use means power what we call it as okay uh, integer division we can use and remainder we can use okay so we can use addition subtraction multiplication division your power or exponentiation and integer division and remainder let's see one by one i think addition and subtraction are self explanatory if i use numbers here because arithmetic operators are, so that means we numbers suppose i use 3 plus 2 you can guess what i can get answer everyone Five. Yes, perfect perfect okay so sometime actually they ask you in interview intentionally can you use python as a calculator intentionally yes. yeah they intentionally they ask you this way can you tell me uh, python can you use as a calculator so immediately uh, what a programmer actually understand whenever the person goes for the interview na he gets tricky okay he is asking me to design a calculator from the python but actually he was means what can you use python as a calculator so yes you can do right can you see that everyone i just type 3 plus 2 and executing i'm getting the result okay so people get confused remember when they ask can you use understand the question proper he is not saying design a calculator using python what he is saying can you use python as a calculator so your answer will be what yes we can do that okay remember that or will listen the question first of all carefully next if i use 3 minus 2 and execute this i'll get 1 clear nothing is special 3 multiplied by 2 i'll get 6 perfect okay 3 divided by 2 i'll get 1.5 simple again again 3 to the power 2 but i will get everyone 3 square 
This is nothing but nine. 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 Right. Three squares. So anything to the power you want to do, you have to use two stars. Okay. Similarly, if I move ahead, what is next one? See, if I do three, two times slash two, what I'm getting? One. This one. is known as actually integer division. Remember. Okay. This is known as integer division. Means it will do the division. Okay. So three divided by two. What were I was getting? 1.5. It will take only integer part of your division. Understand? It will only take the integer part. So what is the integer part of the same? Only one. Suppose I mention five here. Okay. So what division I will get? Two. Two point five. Okay. But what it will take only integer part. So integer part will be what only two. Is it okay, everyone? What the integer division is? Sometimes we call it as floor division as well. Okay. Sometimes we call it as in computer science people they have ceiling, they have floors. If you people are from computer science background. Okay, ceiling and flooring. Flooring is where downside. Ceiling is where upside. Where our fan is rotated, that is a ceiling fan. So upside is a ceiling. Downside is a floor. Okay, so it is also known as floor division. Okay, everyone. Yeah. Is it clear? Right. Okay. Yeah. Let me move. Let me move ahead. And uh, this thing is very very simple. But you should know. Suppose I do five remainder operator two. Okay. So it will tell me what will be the remainder if I divide five by two. What will be the remainder? So remainder will be what? One. 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 Okay. Actually, and you can guess an application. What can be the application of this? Any application. You think it is coming into the mind with the help of modulo operator? Any application. To separate the digits of a number. Okay. But for what purpose? To construct another number, or maybe the reverse to reverse the number. Okay. To construct. Okay. Ah, okay. Yes. Take it, take it very simple. We'll take it very simple. Whatever you are seeing is hundred percent right. We can use it different ways, but simple way. Can't we use it for the even and odd? Yes. Right. One is the simple. One of the simplest thing is that we can use it for sub data is given. We want to do okay. Separate your even numbers with the odd numbers. Right. Separate your even numbers with the odd numbers, or identify whether the given number is even or odd. So we know that whenever even number will be there, whenever there will be even number, what remainder I will get? Always zero. zero. If I divide it by two, the all the time remainder will be zero. Okay. In such application, it is actually important. Okay. In such application, whenever you want to separate data, even data one side or data one side or something like that, endless possibilities are there, as somebody mentioned as well, right? So one of the important application is whenever you want to separate your even numbers with the odd numbers or something like that. For that purpose, because you will use modulo operator with the two and any number uh, divided by two. If remainder is zero, that means it is a even number, right? Now let me move ahead again. <clears throat> Okay, there is there is a few operators which are available, but also there are few functions as well. Very commonly used function, suppose round function. Okay, this is an inbuilt function. Operators are there. There is round function, and if we go there in round, we have actually uh, you can see two arguments: numbers and number of digits. Okay, number you have to pass and number of digits, and always read what it is saying. Round a number, okay, to a given precision in decimal digits. Okay, to the negative uh, decimal digit. Suppose what I did, I pass here uh, five point two eight. Okay, let me execute this. What I'm getting five. Okay, but suppose same number. I pass here like five point two eight, and I mention here one. Mention here one. Let me execute this. Sorry, five point two eight. What I'm getting. One three means the digit after your number actually signifies how many digits you need after the decimal point. Okay, how many digits you need after the decimal point, and by default it is what none. Can you observe everyone? When I didn't specify what I'm getting, five by the normal mathematical rule, right or wrong? How do we take the decision on the basis of five? Okay, so what is here? One. I mentioned one, so I come. Okay, I want to take only one digit, but next digit is what? Eight. Yes, eight means greater than. Five. That means it will be taken as five point three. Is it okay, everyone? Similarly, if I mention same function round, and this time I specify suppose five point two three and one, what I will get? Five point two. Yes, five point two. Normal mathematical rules. Clear, everyone? What is the purpose of round? Yes, sir. Uh, others, please tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Similarly, sometimes yeah, yeah, please. 
Sir, what will happen if two five point two five? Five point two five. Yes. Uh, it will be rounded. Remember, it's normal mathematical rules. Normal okay. mathematical rule that that we follow. Normal mathematical okay. rule. See. Okay. Okay. Normal mathematical rule. Okay. Fine? Okay. 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 Yeah. Fine. So, yeah. So I am moving sir, ahead now. Sir, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sir, I wanted to ask one thing. Uh -huh. How you are getting the help screen for a particular function? Simple, simple. So suppose I type round here. Okay. Put a parenthesis and go and ensure that your cursor is blinking inside the parenthesis. Press Shift and Tap together. Shift and tap together, it will appear. Shift and tap, okay. Okay, just use them. I always use, always. Doesn't matter. Same function I've used thousand times, I always go there. Because what happens? Python keeps on updating something available. Okay, there is, we are getting updates of the Python. We I started working on the Python since Python 2.0 was available. Since right. then, I'm working with the Python. Right now, Python, there is 3.10, which is available currently. Okay, so right. regularly, they are doing the updates. So they keep adding the thing. So I always go to the function definition and check, okay, what is the uh, thing they have added or removed, something like that. Okay. Fine, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I am moving ahead again. Do the next thing. Suppose uh, this simple, that again, very simple function known as absolute function. Okay, what it does, it gives you only the magnitude. Suppose I pass here, minus 5.25. Okay, it will give you only the magnitude. Uh, what happened? Oh, sorry, comma. It comma me, is there. Yeah, yeah, I just changed it. They give me only magnitude. So only magnitude if you need, use absolute function. Okay, we are only concerned about the magnitude, remember? But these are not only the function, actually depending upon your requirement, whenever you require, you may import the third party libraries as well. Okay, there are endless uh, libraries available in the Python. That is the beauty available. Suppose I import a library known as math. So I just mentioned the command import. I'm importing a third party library known as math. Okay. So I just executed this. I imported math. Okay. Means it is not inbuilt directly available for access in the uh, Python. So I have to import it. So I imported math. Okay. So now what I can do, I can uh, explore different, different functions. For example, I use math dot C first of all, come here. Uh, remember what we were getting. Suppose I divided four by three. What output I was getting 1.33, right? But what I want to do, suppose uh, I want to make it two, okay? Means I want to round it to the higher digit this time, higher integer, not lower integer. For lower integer, we have an option, this one already, right? One, I want to round it to the higher digit, means I should get it two. If I execute this, I want it to be two, not 1.33. I want round it to be two. So again, I have a function in the math library known as math.c. I can pack it inside this seal. Remember what is seal? seal? Where is ceiling? Ceiling is at our head, means at the roof. Roof means upwards. Up. Roof means upwards, right? So it will round to the next smallest integer. Next smallest integer. If I uh, execute this, see what I'm getting? Two, right? So remember, it has more options. Suppose similarly, same function if I use, sorry, not same function, but same thing. If I use math dot floor, see what I'm getting. Right? So if you want to the next smallest integer, you seal means any number, not mandatory that you have to use division. Okay. Any number, any number. I just showed you the example. Okay. 1.33. I can directly pass here 1.33 instead of 4 divided by 3. It's like 1.1 even. Even 1.1. Okay. It will give me 2. Not mandatory that you have to pass the division at all. Means any number you want to round it to the next uh, smallest integer, you seal. And uh, you want any number to round to the uh, previous highest integer, previous highest integer, then go with floor. Okay. Similarly, we have different functions available as well. Suppose math dot uh, factorial function. Huge library. This is a very, very huge library, right? Suppose I pass five here. Okay, in one line, it will give me the factorial. You don't have to write the program of the factorial. You just import it in the library and you'll get an answer, right? In one go. So huge, huge, huge options are there in math library. Even several libraries are there, okay? So that's why the Python is becoming so popular is making the life easy for everyone. You don't have to write small, big, big, big codes available. Already libraries are there, import them and use them. Okay, why? Because everyone wants ultimately optimization. Quickly, the work should be done so that you can complete one project early Next time, what will happen? Of course, if one project is done early, then uh, <coughs> next 
project will be given to you and uh, your company will earn more clear everyone tell me yes sir fine yes okay. sir so i am moving ahead now okay uh, suppose a function is given to you like this example um, 5 plus 6 divided by 3 minus 2 something like this is given to you okay 5 plus 6 uh, divided by 3 minus 2 i use just three uh, math arithmetic operators here okay so how they should work actually there is a precedence available okay in arithmetic operator there is certainly some precedence available that we call as operator precedence means how you should execute this what will be the answer of this okay so what is a precedence means what which will be given the highest priority which will be given the lowest priority remember first of all the parenthesis will always be given the highest priority normal mathematical rule that we studied associativity rules as well okay parentheses will be given your highest priority okay second exponentiation exponentiation will be given second highest priority third one third priority will be given to multiplication or division if they are at the same priority level okay there is no uh, <coughs> priority individual among them multiplication and division at the same level and last one is your fourth one if you talk about addition and subtraction okay so this is the priority if you decide okay now if you can answer me how it will be evaluated means first what will be evaluated 6 by 3 yes first come here parenthesis is there no Bottom exponentiation is there no then what is there everyone division. division okay so first of all division will happen means what will happen we will get the result of division what will be 2 it will be 2 now done move ahead uh, now what operation are remaining addition and subtraction which are at fourth level now which should be which will be executed first remember when it is the case when everything is at the same priority level Listen. you will follow the associativity rule and you will start from left to right you will start from left to right clear everyone yes sir okay you will start from left to right you are clear associativity so you will start from left move to the left to right what is this 7, seven. okay so 7 and then minus 2 the answer will be what Five. Okay. So remember these rules. How they are executing? I am writing once again. Let me execute five plus six divided by three minus two. Execute this. We'll get five only. Is it okay, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Yes, now tell. Now tell me if I write this way. Hmm. Ten. Uh, minus two. But in parentheses. Okay. Plus three to the power two. Okay, and then this divided by three minus ten. How it will be evaluated, everyone? First ten minus two. Yes, first will be parentheses. So what is the parentheses? Ten minus two. It will be giving me eight, right? Now next, everyone. Then three raised to two. Three raised to the two. Very good. That will be what? Nine means plus will remain there. It will become nine. So now it will become nine divided by three minus ten. Now everyone, now it's very simple. Now, now nine by three first. Yes, nine by three first. That will be three. Now next Answer everyone. One, now sorry sorry. Eight plus three. Answer is okay, one. Yeah. yeah, eight plus three will be. now it will start from left to right so 8 plus 3 will be because they are at the same yeah. priority level 8 and plus and minus are at the same priority level addition and subtraction so 8 plus 3 will be 11 okay then 11 minus 10 will be what 1 okay yeah. i can verify this let me execute this see everyone i hope it makes sense yes sir any doubt everyone even single one in this then you can ask me otherwise i can move ahead Can I move ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, so sir. so let's yes, let's sir. move ahead. Yeah, let's move ahead now to conditional statements. Conditional statements. Okay, so start with your conditional statement is if understand you'll write first of all your if. Okay, if means whenever you want uh, some code to execute, but depending upon the condition. 
okay whenever you want some code to execute but depending upon the condition if a condition is satisfied then do this otherwise do something else okay something like this when you want conditionally execute means you want your fan to turn on only when humans are there example i giving an example you want to turn your fan on only if human is there means some condition is applied right so when you want some conditional execution then you will go with the if statement so what i am writing see everyone after the if you will write an expression actually somebody's background voice is coming just a second everyone yeah thank uh, no let me manually do it yeah okay so you will write an expression but remember you will only write an expression which can result in true or false okay you will write an expression which should result in true or false once that expression is written you will put a colon here okay you will put a colon here and press enter once done understand you will write your statements which you want to execute but before that whatever you are writing remember that you will land at indentation okay this is what we call it as indentation this is one of the issue in the python code when uh, some amateur starts to work on the coding they say my output is not coming proper okay they receive some files from somewhere or they copied some code from the internet okay and when we copy the result from the internet at that time mostly your indentation got disturbed okay at that time they are not able to troubleshoot because they under, don't understand how it is working understand whenever after the colon i'll press enter you will land under the indentation and this indentation is four white space away from the extreme left four white spaces mean somehow it, it is disturbed okay come here one way is that come to the colon and press enter you will automatically come here this is one way come to the colon press enter you will automatically come here but suppose you want to come through this way come here and press four times space bar 1 2 3 4 now you are at the right place so four white space and here you write your statements okay example statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 okay those statements which you want to execute when the condi above condition that you mentioned becomes true okay you write here statements those statements which you want to execute if this condition results in true if this condition results in true i want to execute this statement that you will write here but suppose somehow one statement is written here statement 4 okay so remember this is no longer part of this if statement this is no longer part of this statement means these statement will execute only and only if this condition results in true but as it is at the same indentation of the if it is 100% going to be executed independent of whether this will execute or not execute okay let me show you an example <clears throat> suppose i mention this way if uh, i mention suppose um, true for example right now directly i'm writing true means i have to write an expression which result in true and false so i'm just for a sake of simplicity i'm writing right now true and i mention here print uh hi then i mention sorry print hi then i mention suppose print by okay and then i mention here print chai something like this okay so what will happen this condition is true right already we mentioned true so 100% is true so this will be executed this will be executed as well as this will be executed for sure guaranteed doesn't matter these execute or not so if i execute this can you see i see hi i see by i see chai all three are visible here but suppose instead of true i mention here false okay directly i am mentioning here false so what will happen will these be executed now no these will be executed only and only when this condition results in true remember this will be executed only and only in one condition when this condition will result in true when this condition will result in true so it is false so these two will not be executed but this print is not a part of the if statement okay so it will not be executed i'll move to the next line and this code will be executed okay everything runs in sequence right so if this is not executed move ahead this will be executed okay so let me execute this and we'll see only print a uh, chai i hope it makes sense everyone indentation thing is clear yes sir okay so indentation mean indentation indentation thing should be clear right and see right now i will use only if statement nothing else no lf no else means only if statement also you can use only and only 
if statement you can also use you can also use this way as well suppose this way you mention some condition condition 1 or an expression which will result in true and false okay you mention something here or expression whatever you want to write is your wish expression which should result in true and false expression 1 you wrote some statements here statement 1 then you mention a second statement statement 2 okay but suppose here you mention some condition which is not covering all possibilities okay you here you mention some condition which is not covering all the possibilities so you want to further check okay you want to further check then you said understand similar to other programming language where is where they have else if we have here elif we have here elif so if you want to write elif understand this elif should be at the same indentation of the if this elif should be at the same indentation of if so what will happen once i write a statement 2 i will press enter i will come here at the indentation level okay so i have to take it where here okay at the same indentation of if and i can mention here elif what my expression 2 Second condition that I want to check, I can press colon, and again I press enter. I will land under the indentation. So here I can write statements. Statement, suppose three, and statement, suppose four. Similarly, I want to further check the condition. Okay, now again go and if expression three, colon, unsure colon. Okay, statement. Five statement six. Okay, but remember the order of execution, everyone. That is very very important. Understand. First of all, expression one will be evaluated. If it becomes true, these statements will be executed, and you won't even check the second and third statement. Remember that. If your first condition becomes true, you won't even check the condition two and condition three. Okay. you will come to condition 2 means second expression only and only if expression 1 results in false if expression 1 results in false or expression 1 fails means your condition fails whatever condition you mention in the expression 1 that fails or it results in false then and then only then you will come to the check expression number 2 okay now if this condition becomes true statement 3 and 4 will be executed is statement number expression number 3 won't be even checked won't be even checked but suppose if your expression 1 fails you will come to the expression 2 now even if expression 2 fails only then you will come to the expression number 3 clear everyone the order of execution please tell me yes Okay. Yes, sir. That, that remember that okay you will come to the second expression only when first expression fails you will come to the third expression only if one and two both fails okay again so you can use this any elif you want similarly sometime you may do this thing as well you can include optional again optional remember what a else clause optional again you may include a else clause means Uh, some conditions are covered by this not satisfied some condition covered by this not satisfied some condition covered by this not satisfied means if none of the condition is getting satisfied then what you want none of the condition gets satisfied what you want then you will mention else in that case you don't have to mention any expression or condition you have to just put a colon okay and you can write here whatever you want suppose statement number 7 and when it will be executed i mentioned when if Elif, this elif, all the if and elif fails. Only then else statement will be executed. Okay. If your if statement fails, your elif statement fails. Second elif statement means all your if and elif statement fails. Only then this else statement will be executed. Clear, everyone? Yes. Right. Similarly, you can do this thing as well. Okay. Means this is your expression available. Suppose this if statement. i can include means not mandatory that if elif is there don't then only else will come you can use only else with if as well means like this right means if is there then i want to use okay if condition is not true do one thing mention what else and whatever you want to do suppose statement number 3 here suppose this is statement number 1 this is statement number 2 
and this is statement number three. And suppose this is my expression. Okay, so first of all, expression will be checked. If expression results in true, statement one and two will be executed. Else won't be even touched. Else won't be even touched. Right? Done. Because you've been done. Else will be executed only when your if statement fails. If your if statement fails, it is returning false. That means, of course, these two will not be executed. Only this will be executed. Clear, everyone? Any doubt in this? No. Okay. So now let's take a scenario. Okay, with these. Suppose. Uh, what is happening? I'm planning to design a smart home, okay, in which I have placed a thermos thermostat, which will take the temperature or a temperature sensor I place somewhere, which is measuring the temperature of my room, okay. So I'm I'm storing there somewhere, and that uh, value it is storing is known as suppose temperature, okay. And suppose the temperature value currently whatever it is, whatever it is, it may be reading some value. Let it be, but variable name is suppose temperature right now, okay. Then what I want, I want something to happen. What this way? If temperature is greater than thirty, okay. Then suppose I want to turn on my AC. Okay. If temperature is greater than thirty, I want to turn on my AC. Okay. But if your temperature is greater than twenty, temperature is Is greater than twenty, but less than or equal to thirty. Less than or equal to thirty. Then when I want to turn on my cooler or turn on my fan, suppose. Okay, turn on my fan. Okay, again same way. <clears throat> If temperature is greater than ten. Okay, and less than or equal to twenty. Okay, I don't want to turn anything. Okay, means nothing. Not not that neither AC or fan. So neither even fan is not required. Okay, right now we cannot turn on the AC and fan. So we will suppose I want to print this. Okay, take it this way. I want to print this statement. Turn on the AC. But if we are working on the Raspberry Pi or just a Nano, anything we are going to work or Arduino even, we can implement this. Okay, very very simple thing. Right, done. And similarly, if uh, temperature is say less than ten, less than or equal to ten, I want to suppose print this time turn on blower. It's very cool. Okay, this thing I have to implement. If temperature greater than thirty. I want to print turn on the AC in real life. We can send a command, okay, where my different relays are there. Uh, I can connect to uh, different relays with the help of my Raspberry Pi board, okay, or my Jetson Nano board, and I can send a command on the particular board. If it is uh, means temperature greater than thirty, I will send a command to a particular relay to turn on my AC. If temperature is between twenty and thirty, I will send a command to a particular ray which is controlling my fan to turn on that. Similarly, if I am working on this thing, I will send a command to a particular relay which is operating my uh, fan, whatever it is, fan or a blower. Okay, that way you have to design. Okay, so can we do that, everyone? I think it's very easy. Should I start? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's start. Very simple. <clears throat> so suppose I am saying, if so, what we have to check, everyone? Temperature, right? We have to check what? Temperature. So I'm mentioning if temperature is greater than thirty. Very first expression, right? First expression. Then colon. But I want to do print. What? Whatever is mentioned. Turn, turn on. on the AC. Right. Anything else we need to do? No. Done. Right. But our conditions are still remaining. So it will cover only which condition? Temperature is greater than. Thirty, but we have mentioned other conditions as well, right? So what we have to do this time, everyone? Lf, right? Lf. So we will do lf. How? Come here, extreme left, minus ten. Lf. Temperature. See properly, everyone. This is important. If temperature is greater than twenty. I know immediately the questions will come, but I want those questions to come. Print. Turn on the 
fine tell me everyone will it give me correct result or wrong result it will give you wrong, wrong result everyone please go through this properly sir it will give you a correct reason uh, correct correct reason sir yes. correct yes yes very good very good right and if you understand remember that's why i took the time to explain your order remember when you will come to the second elif only when your first, one first, is first really condition angry. fails okay if your condition first condition fails then only you will come to the second condition right means if first condition is failing that means guaranteed your temperature is what less, less than, than or equal to 30 getting the point sir yes sir now clear the person who was saying uh, it will give the wrong result okay although same uh, problem you can solve different ways as well this way suppose temp lf if temperature greater than 20 and at the same time temperature should be less than or equal to 30 this can also work no problem but unnecessary when one statement is helping me out why we won't use this why will uh, why don't we optimize this right or wrong everyone yes sir yes right so that's for the optimization purpose it is even not required this is where your amateur people do the mistakes okay there where optimization thing come to the picture because same result it will give me and same result actually this will give me right now if you can help me out in writing the further expression what should i do next everyone elif temperature okay. uh, greater than uh, 10 very good very good. lf temperature, temperature greater than 10 colon colon yeah uh, print enter, print even the fan is not required yes even the fan is not required right again everyone next again we will go to lf now see here the logic comes do we need lf this time or directly else will do for me else. now else will do else. For right right everyone clear because uh, we know only one condition is left so if anything uncovered anything uncovered will be covered by what else, else. so i can else. mention here else okay else else we can mention means even uh, anything less than that okay anything less than that we can mention what print print and blow yes turn on the blower right so let me set some temperature value suppose i am mentioning 32 means my first condition let me execute this first of all okay done now if i execute see which condition will satisfy everyone temperature is equal to 32 which condition will be satisfied first one first one right so directly this turn on ac will be executed further condition won't be even checked let me execute this Can you see everyone? Yeah. Right. Let me come here and mention twenty nine. So of course, let me execute this cell. Of course, my uh, first condition will fail, right, everyone? But my yes. second condition will be true. It's cheated. Yeah, it it's will cheated. be true. It will be true, right? So I will get turn on the fan. Parit sal dala ka dutti na. Right, everyone. Please tell me, is it okay? right yes. similarly suppose i this time mention temperature 17 so first condition fail second condition fail. fail third will be true right everyone third condition will be true so i will be getting uh, even the fan is not required let me execute this and let me come here right but suppose i mention here it okay then execute this execute this turn on the i think it should be okay everyone yes yes yeah i think right so till now we just mention only single condition but in the if statement we can use multiple conditions as well for that actually we require logical operators for that we actually require our logical operators understand everyone logical operators and you people must be knowing about those those are your and operator or operator not and not operator right and or a not are there 
with the help of combination you can implement even and nor or because and and or are there there are basic gates so the and or and not are there there are basic gates so with the help of them you can implement even and logic or nor logic even xor logic even xnor logic okay but basic lots basic gates are already there and or are not so once they are there you can do implement anything that you want to do okay now suppose what is the requirement your boss opened a loan provider company okay which will provide a, a suppose private loans what no no private loans the proper term is personal loans they used to provide okay they used to provide just a second yeah they used to provide personal loans so as they just open the business they say okay i am the king people will come to take the loan i will put some conditions so they decided two conditions okay first condition is that the credit score of every person should be minimum that is greater than or equal to 300 first condition okay second minimum salary should be greater than or equal to 25000 rupees if these two condition will be satisfied only and only then i'll provide the loan otherwise i will not provide the loan both the condition should be met simultaneously it means both the condition should be satisfied only and only then i will provide the loan or grant the loan otherwise i will not grant the loan okay so what we did we designed a solution for the same where we will ask from the user the normally we go to the website uh, have you seen that uh, in hindi they come aaj hi policy bazaar pe jaye aur apna credit score check kare have you seen that at everyone on the tv if you people see hindi if you see hindi yes, channel i don't know right you it is there right so what is there on their website you fill some data and they'll show you their credit score whether you are eligible for the loan or not suppose that kind of scenario i want to design right so i will ask from the user please provide me uh, suppose uh, credit score so i said credit equals to input which i want to take from the user and i say please uh, provide your credit score i give him some space so he can enter one second uh, i i ask him salary salary what is his salary so i i can miss please input sorry please uh, provide your monthly salary please provide your monthly salary something like this okay so of course uh, user will enter the input user will enter his credit score which will be in terms of numbers he will input his salary which will be in terms of numbers okay so we need remember, to convert it into yes 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 we need to convert it into the integer because we want to use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to comparison right everyone clear suppose i do this thing uh, you can understand it itself what is the logic of the same if i use this thing suppose 300 makes no sense 300 comma greater than this number that is 300 so it is no makes no sense makes no sense right so we need to convert them into what integer so how will i do that everyone can you help me out in the same in input yes let me put in this side very good okay similarly here also okay and now <clears throat> what i want and suppose let me take one more thing his in name as well name and i will ask him input mm, please enter your full name okay something like this okay once he will enter his full name okay what i want done everything will be done he will enter his name he will enter his credit score now i want to run my program okay so what i will mention everyone if what is credit whatever he will enter understand everyone is what greater than or equal to what everyone what condition we have set 300 300 right so let me make it 300 okay at the same time second condition needs to be checked that is what salary should be what greater than or equal to 25 25000 but both of these conditions should be satisfied simultaneously both of these conditions should be satisfied what simultaneously so which logical operator first of all accepts multiple inputs and give you output only when give you true output only when all the conditions are true and and and, 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 and. everyone agree with this everyone right yes, and yes, is the one which give you the output 
true only when all the condition met simultaneously. So I will put in between what? End. And what is my best? Actually, I can say this is best practice. Whenever I mention some condition, I actually peg them inside the parentheses. So that there is no confusion at all. Like this. Okay. And uh, done. And after that, I can put what? Colon. Colon. Okay. And after that, if both the conditions are satisfied, then what do I want to do? Print. Now, everyone, what I have to do, see smartly this. Okay. I have to mention, hey, his name. Okay. Hey, first of all, his name. Sorry, please try again. So what should I do? If this condition is satisfied, that means it will be granted for sure, right? So right now we have to say, hey, uh, his name, congratulations, you are eligible. Suppose this is first, because this is what? If this condition is satisfied, if this condition is satisfied, then you want to grant him the loan. Na? So you have to give him a congratulation message. Congratulations, you are eligible. Or his name should be there. We can use string formatting. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. So tell me how to do. I can use double quotes. Uh, we will use uh, double quotes. I can F, say congrats. Uh, before, uh, yeah, you can use F. You can use F as well, or you can use format method as well, right? Both will work. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats. Now his name. And then placeholders. Clear everyone? Placeholders. Then congrats. Okay. You are eligible for loan. Okay. And after that, what? Dot format okay and where i will mention if there is only one placeholder i've used so i will pass here what only name right this is first thing second else okay if this condition fails okay then i want to print sorry please try some or please sorry you are not eligible okay again same message i can copy like this and I can say, sorry, and his name, uh, you are not eligible for loan. Is it okay, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so let me execute and let's check some input some values. Uh, run this, enter my full name. Suppose my full name is Praveer Saxena. Okay, uh, credit, suppose, uh, let me post first of all, all the suitable conditions, suppose 400 credit score. Okay, and monthly salary, suppose 50,000. I should get uh, Congress Praveer Saxena, you are eligible for the loan, execute. Yeah, perfect, right everyone? Yes. Right, now let me input something different. Yeah, full name, again I type my full name, Praveer Saxena. Enter. Credit score, suppose, is correct, 400. Sorry, 400. And But suppose salary is uh, less than 25,000. Suppose 20,000 I entered. Okay. So only one condition is satis getting satisfied, right? But in end what? Remember, both the conditions should be satisfied simultaneously. So I should get sorry message. Enter. Is it fine, everyone? Yes. Okay. Now suppose, now you can answer me. What happens? Because you your boss put very strict condition and nobody's turning and nobody's able to satisfy these loan requirement. So he said, okay, yaar, nobody's turning up. My business is going in huge loss. So let's do one thing. If even a single condition is satisfied, we'll provide the loan. Even if single condition is satisfied, his credit score is more than that, or his salary is more than that. Anyone is satisfied. Even one is satisfied. We'll provide them loan. In that case, what do we have to do, everyone? Or will be used. Yes, yes. We have to use or condition. Because in or, even if single input is true, your output will be in our condition, even if single input is true, your output will be true. So what changes I have to make here, right? I have to just copy this here. And here I have to mention only one thing. What? Instead of end, R. R. nothing special. And let's verify this time. Uh, execute, done. Let me mention my name, Praveer. Done. Credit score, suppose, uh, let me intentionally put, first of all, all wrong. Okay. So 200. And uh, salary is supposed 10,000 for 1,000 even. I should get a sorry message. Yeah, it's sorry message, fine. Enter once again, again my name. Okay, and credit score suppose this time is fine, 400. 
but salary is less than suppose the salary is only 1000 rupees let me check it should give me in this time congress message yeah perfect right everyone can you check okay or i can once again change third condition let me also check praveer saxena uh, credit score suppose is uh, 250 but my salary is more than 25000 suppose 30000 it should give me again congress message yeah perfect and if i check both of them together name is praveer saxena uh, credit score is 400 salary is suppose 50000 it should again give me congress message is it okay everyone okay sir Okay, so can we continue tomorrow? Is it fine? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Bye bye. Take oh, care. Thank you. Me, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, sir. Me, sir. sir, I'm yeah. having a small doubt in uh -huh. uh, uh, that uh, make transfer.